Hello and welcome back to Ireland. In this video, I'm going to be answering a question that I get all the time. And that is, which is the best Fujifilm camera if I'm just starting out? It's the question I get all the time. And in this video, I'm gonna try and answer it. Now, this is a very complex question because there are obviously multiple cameras that one could buy, especially from the Fujifilm range. And it's depending on your needs, whether you are photography first or video first, or you're a hybrid shooter. And more importantly, other factors like what is your budget? And do you want it to have interchangeable lenses or do you want it to be a fixed lens? However you answer those questions will determine what camera you end up buying. But let's say that you are a beginner to intermediate photographer. You like to do a little bit of video. You like to travel. It's something that you kind of want to just chuck in your bag and you don't want to spend a huge amount of money. Then maybe, maybe this is the camera for you. So the offering and the answer I at the moment always give is the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II. I think that this camera is wonderful and it sits somewhere in between all of the things that I just said. The video capabilities are good. Obviously the photographic capabilities are brilliant. It has all those wonderful Fujifilm simulations that everyone goes on about. And it's affordable, it's not overly priced, like the X106, for example, or the X100V. Like, those cameras are great, but I feel if you are just starting out, that fixed focal length is quite limiting. Look, I'm gonna take a further few more shots. I'm gonna go into town, where it's a little bit more busy, do a bit of street photography. I've got my 35mm f2 lens on here. This is another great little starter kind of setup. It's small, compact, and if you like traveling, moving around, this is a great combo. If you are thinking, well, what lenses would you pair with this? I'd also think about the kit lens too, but maybe we'll save that for another video where I can tell you more about what I think about, you know, lenses and all of that stuff. But as for a camera, maybe the Mark II X-T30 is your best bet. Before we go into the pros and cons, let me give you the specs. So it is a 26 megapixel camera. It has an ISO ranging from 160 to 12,800. It has a hybrid AF system with up to 425 points, eight frames per second drive speed with the mechanical shutter. It shoots 4K and DCI 4K up to 30 frames per second with F-Log, 8-bit 420 internal recording and 10-bit 422 external recording with an HDMI. The OLED viewfinder with up to 2.36 million dots it has one SD card slot. It uses an MPW126S battery. The weight is 378 grams and is priced at 799 pounds. Here it is in euros and in dollars. 
So they are the specs, but it's not really about specs on this channel. I don't really do that. I like to inform you, but it's not the be all and end all. What it is about, especially on this channel, is user and shooting experience. Now these are just my opinions and what I think, but here are the pros and cons to the X-T30 Mark II. The first pro and the massive advantage to owning this camera is that it sits somewhere between a beginner, intermediate and pro. Whatever level you're at in your photography and your videography, the X-T30 Mark II could definitely fit somewhere in your kit. As a beginner, this is a great entry level camera. The Fujifilm simulations make it so easy to go out and shoot. And if you're a hobbyist who is just starting out, really wanting to get into photography, I think this is the best way in. I'd say if you're an intermediate shooter, this could definitely be a consideration. I think it all depends on the situation and what you're using your camera as. If it is for street and travel, this is perfect because it's small, it's inconspicuous. Shooting on the streets of Ireland today, having this round my neck, really felt like I was just a tourist photographer. It didn't feel like I was intimidating anyone with a massive, huge camera. I had a small setup, I was using my 35mm f2, and it was compact. It really, it could fit in my bag when I went to go have a coffee, or for most of the time, it just hung around my neck. So if you are an intermediate, this, this could definitely be a good buy. And for all you professionals out there thinking about this camera, this could be definitely a great backup camera to if, I'm sure if you're a professional, you've it to your main camera. And if, and especially if you are a Fuji film shooter. This was my first time using this camera today. I have recommended it a lot, but it's great that I've finally had a chance to get my hands on it. I don't own this camera. It is on loan to me. I will be giving it back. So to sum up what I feel that the biggest pro to this camera is that it really could benefit beginner, intermediate or pro. It really does tick a lot of boxes for every level. But we're talking about beginners and I think this is a really good entry point for Fujifilm rather than buying something like the X106 5F or an X Pro 3 or 2. I feel like this is more user friendly and easier to get to grips with, easier to understand and and more adaptable, especially having a place where you can interchange lenses. Like I said, build your collection of gear. You can start small, but with this camera, you can start building more lenses until you may want to buy something like the X-T5 or the X-H2 or X-H2S. So a great starting point for any newbie to Fuji. Newbie to Fuji, I like that. So some of the other pros just quickly are the size of it, it's tiny. It's really, really travel friendly. Like I said, it doesn't intimidate people on the street and it's very lightweight. You stick a small lens on here, it's very compact. But let's talk about the cons. With a pro being it's small and compact, but it also can be a con. For someone like me, who has slightly larger hands, it can be a little fuddy to get my hands around. Don't get me wrong, this is a pro and it's perfect for someone who is looking for something compact, but if you have big hands, this could be definitely a deal breaker. Another con is it still takes one of those darn batteries, that MPW126S batteries. This has been a huge gripe for me, something why I personally picked the XS20, but if you you know, if you're a casual shooter, you could make this last the day. And if you have a power bank with you, you can always top it up when you're having a break. And also just maybe get some other batteries. It, there are loads of workarounds around this. Another con is I would suggest buying another eye cup for this camera. I noticed that it got a bit smudged and a bit dirty and I had to clean it quite a lot while taking photos today. So that would be another small con that I would fix in this on this camera so they are a few cons like i was saying these are workarounds and possibly like i said if you've got giant hands i haven't got giant hands it's just i'm used to a system which is much bigger like the xh2s and by the end of today i've kind of got used to the smaller setup it's not that fiddly but you know, someone, some people like a deeper grip and maybe this just isn't for you. However, you might be able to, I haven't looked into it, you might be able to buy yourself a bigger grip. 
Let's talk about the difference between the X-T30 and the X-T30 Mark II. You might be seeing both and you might be trying to weigh up both. So let's go over a few differences there. So first off, the autofocus is much quicker. Although they have the same equal amount of points, it inherits the latest software updates from the X-T4. This just means it focuses faster and locks speed by 0.0. .0 two seconds so that might be important to you film simulations and image settings the xt30 mark ii now has two more additional fuji film film simulations we have classic neg and a turner bleach bypass if if you're someone who plays around with those fuji film simulations maybe that is definitely something to consider also the lcd screen the only difference here is that the xt30 mark ii has much more resolution it has 1.68 million dots over 1.4 million dots on the X-T30. For video, the original X-T30 can only shoot up to 4K for about 10 minutes, whereas the X-T30 Mark II can now shoot up to 30 minutes 4K. And just the price alone, it is about 100 bucks more. So you just have to kind of know what's within your budget and uh, and if those things matter to you, which they might not. So anyway, look, what would you recommend to someone getting into photography or maybe wanting a backup camera? What would you recommend to them as a Fujifilm user? Do you agree with me or would you recommend something else? I'd love to know. I'd love to hear what you think. So drop them in the comments below. Overall, I think this is a great camera. It's something I'm definitely going to keep recommending to people. I think of all levels, not just beginners, but it always depends on your needs, your budgets and how you want to shoot. Anyway, I have to give this thing back now, sadly, but a great camera. Like I said, give me your thoughts. Let me know what you think. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.